I'm going to create an assembly and perform a motion analysis on it. I'm going to select open and create a new assembly. We'll select OK. Under browse, I'm going to look for one of my parts. I'll select a beam 15 and to drop it into the main part of the assembly. I'm just going to click the check mark and you'll see that the F icon comes up after this part so showing that it is fixed. I'm now going to bring in another part under the insert component menu. I'll go browse. I'll bring in beam 9 and just click to drop it. All right, so now we need to add the appropriate mates. So I'll select mate and the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inner cylinder on this part, the 9-hole part, and the inner cylinder of the 15-hole part. You can see from the pop-up menu that the coincident icon is selected, so that's the default. It's assuming that that's what I want to do, and it is indeed what I want to do. So we'll click Finish. Now there's, we can take this part and see that we can drag it in the Y direction, and we can also rotate it around the Y axis. So doing that simple concentric mate has uh, reduced our six degrees of freedom down to two degrees of freedom. We're going to lock down one additional degree of freedom by selecting this surface of the 15 hole beam and the corresponding mating surface of the 9 hole beam. Again, the default uh, window comes up. It's selected a coincident mate, but actually, I'm going to want to have a slight distance between these parts. So I'm going to select distance, and a nice distance is. Um, 0.05 and we'll select done and we'll finish the mate commands. With this completed I now have an assembly that has one degree of freedom and if I want to actually perform an analysis on that we can add a motor to it. And how we're going to do this is go down to the motion study tab. We're going to click motion study and one of the options that we have here. So in the motion study right now, there here's our beam, our two beams and our mates are located. And we're going to add in an additional component. In this case, we're going to put a motor in. So select motor and let me just pull this down a little bit. So there's a couple things we need to take a look at. First, is the motor going to be rotary or linear? Well, we want rotational motion, so rotary motion is already pre-selected. Uh, this blue box that's highlighted is the motor location. We're going to locate the motor in this cylinder of the fixed beam. So I'll select that. And it also gives a default direction right now. So here's the, uh, the, the direction is being specified here. It is being shown uh, clockwise in this direction as we're viewing at it. If I wanted to switch the direction, I can come over here and click the reverse direction icon. So we'll just leave it like that. And now the next one is what is the component to move relative to where the motor is fixed to. So again, think of it in the real physical sense. The motor is connected to the fixed beam and this uh, nine hole beam is what's going to rotate. So we'll select this beam. And the last thing we want to define is the type of motion that the motor is going to produce. We'll leave it at being constant speed, but Let's change this to 60 RPM, and then we can run our analysis for, for every second. It'll run through one complete rotation. And that specifies the motor. We'll select OK. And you can see down here in the menu that we now have a rotary motor selected. If I go ahead and just hit play now, our the default settings will actuate the motor for five seconds. You can see that it's kind of choppy. So we can fix that by going here under motion study properties and increasing the number of frames per second. So let's increase this up to 30. And we'll select done. And we can go ahead here and recalculate the motion study. So we do that. We get a much smoother uh, solution. And we could go ahead, if we wanted to, we could leave this playback going into a looped mode. 
and we can hit play. You might notice that the shadow is oscillating in the background here. I don't exactly know why it's doing that, but that's something for another time. So anyway, this is how you create an assembly and perform a basic motion study.